Hello class, good morning or good evening or whenever you're watching this video. Things will be a bit different in this video because I have not posted some of the stuff to LoudCloud yet. So I'm gonna show you how to do that afterwards or you feel fine because we have the newest announcement. So what you're going to need is you're going to need at least three things. That's going to be the, up, uh, the update experiment, which I will post. This will tell you some background information you guys are gonna need to answer the questions. You are then going to need the worksheet or lab summary sheet. That is the key. It is that one right here. There we go. Boom, right here. Okay. And you're also going to need a data sheet. Now, none of you guys should have data set A, so you should not get the exact same numbers I do. I am doing this on purpose, so you guys can't copy me exactly. You're going to use the exact same setups and stuff, but everything's going to be a bit different. Does that make sense? Hopefully that does make sense. Okay. So what I do, what I like to do, is I like to take all the data from the data sets and plug it into an Excel. Boom. I then like to graph it and make sure it makes sense. I have pH on my y-axis and volume on x-axis. I like that. That's good. Boom. I am then going to take these data tables and then plug them into Logger Pro. You guys should have downloaded Logger Pro. Hopefully you have. If you have not, that's going to be a big problem. Why aren't you pasting? There we go. Cool. Boom, boom, boom. This is the exact same thing, except this prime, I'm not, it's not connecting the dots yet, but exact same data sets. So with derivative methods, there are two ways to figure out something's equivalence points. There is graphical and derivative. And if we look at the summary sheet, we need to do both, graphical and derivative. I'll get there momentarily before I should talk about the activities. Uh, activity one is just finding a video just like techniques in chemistry. Find me a video on how to use titrations. Make sure it comes from a science old channel, like, like, like a college or some type of science YouTube channel. Good. Up next, you get to put the information of what is being used. Now this is acid base one, which means we're using a strong acid and a strong base. It's the, we are using hydrochloric acid and NaOH. The NaOH is the concentration like it was in our uh, acid base two. This one is unknown. It is unknown to the very beginning. We don't need to have the bottle's information, so that's Na, not applicable. I do apologize for my poor spelling. Titration curve, I'm sure you gotta get that in a little bit. And then I'll show you how to do this. The data set, you tell me which data set you have. I have data set A. We need a graphical and derivative. So the graphical way of doing it is to draw lines in which the thing is flat. Again, I'm drawing with a mouse, so it's not the best. Connect the lines and then the middle point, what happens to be a point right there. So my equivalence point graphically is that guy, which is 30 milliliters at seven pH which is very, very good for a thing. So I'm going to have a pH of seven pH, and it's gonna be at 30 milliliters. That is what my graphical equivalence point is. Very, very easy. This is why I tell you guys to graph your equivalence point for acid base two before kind of guessing where it's located. It makes it much, much easier. The derivative method's a bit different. That's why we have to use Logger Pro. So first step, get your data into Logger Pro. Next, hit data. We're gonna do new column. Um, oops, wrong one. New calculated column, yes. New calculated column. We're gonna call the new calculated column derivative. We can call it whatever you want, but I'm calling it mine derivative. You're gonna hit calculus and then derivative. Good. Now it's gonna ask for some type of function. 
the function you're going to put is the function of y into the function of x. And you're going to hit done. We're then going to take this column and you're going to drag it and click it in. Boom. That is how you get the derivative. Now we're not done just yet. We have to move the scaling a bit. So you're going to right click onto the graph. We're going to go to graph options, axis options. Now everything's on the derivative is on my y axis, which I don't want it to be because that's what pH is supposed to be. So I take it off the y axis and I put it on the right y axis. Okay, you gotta hit the button for hit this button first and then click here. Cool. And hit done. Boom. <clears throat> we can also go to graph options. Graph options. We're going to connect points and type in the title. The title is a titration of unknown HCL versus NaOH. Sorry about that. Hit OK. Boom, everything's graphed. Nice. <clears throat> I forgot to do some things. So now we're going to go back to column options, data set Y. We got to name this. We're going to name it PH. Boom. Uh, graph option. Nope. Column options, data set X. Or type volume of N NaOH. That's going to be in milliliters. Boom. Good, good. And then uh, because my derivative is kind of messed up, we're going to change it a little bit. We're going to go to back to graph options, access options, and we're going to rescale it a bit. So we want to make sure that we put the top number as the biggest number on the derivative section. So go through the derivative section and I think I see 2.7. That's pretty big. Okay. That's my biggest number is 2.7. So I go to graph options, access, not 100. I'm going to go three because my biggest was 2.7. I'll go slightly bigger than my biggest one. Hit done and that should affect it like that. Now the derivative is where the derivative first crosses, which would be roughly at that point, right about there. It's an eyeball guesstimate, but that's what we want right there. And that's going to be, let's write this down so I can write it out. I can remember it correctly later on. It's going to be 30.55 at 8.59. Cool. I'm then going to copy this graph, move it over to my acid base in this box. I'm just going to, boom, paste my graph. And that is about 35%, well, about 35, about 55% of this lab is done just by doing that. Derivative method. I calculated my vol, my pH was about 8.59 pH, and my volume was 30.55 milliliters. <clears throat> ah, what is the concentration of my H? Was a concentration of that. So we did not do any accurate. We only did a rapid. That being because it's a strong acid, strong base, there is only one equivalence point. So there's no point in doing an accurate titration as there was in acid base two. So concentration, the concentration is just going to be how much HCl we have at the equivalence point. And remember, HCl is a strong acid. 
which means it dissociates 100%. Whoops. So when it dissociates, it's going to dissociate fully into H concentration, H plus Cl. And remember that pH, whoops, see Daisy. Do not draw with a mouse, guys, it sucks. pH is equal to negative log of H concentration. So if we want to find the concentration of H, which will help us find the same, exact same concentration as HCl, we're just going to do base 10 of negative pH. And that should give us our, con our concentration. So using calculator, base 10 of negative 7 gives me um, 1 times 10 to the negative 7th HCl. base 10 of negative 8.889 gives me 0.28 concentration 10 of the ninth. One second, I need to deal with something going on. Give me one second, be right back. Hello, I'm back. Sorry, I had to go deal with something real quick. I had a phone call I had to deal with. Okay, going back. Oops, that's the key. We're not gonna look at the key. We're gonna look at our data. All right, ignore that. So I made a mistake real quick. Sorry, I was in a fluster. If you read it very carefully, it says use the determinant equivalent point, report the HDL determined for each trial which means if we, we need to forget the original concentration of our acid. And we can easily do that by doing the exact same method, but instead of using the equivalence point, we're gonna use the very first point taken. For data set A, 0 0.92, base 10, or 10 to the negative 9.2, gives me 0.12 concentration of HCl. And I have the exact same one for this. Now, I think this might have been a typo from later onwards, but that's what I want you guys to put. Cool, you saw the key, you'll see that's very clearly close to one of them. Now this box right here, I don't care about, delete it. That box should not be there. Get rid of the, get rid of the box entirely, it's not important. Boom, 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 boom. So far, so good. Okay, I'll talk about these post-lab questions real quick. I can't give you the answers, but we can talk about them. So how reproducible will the concentration values determined for each trial? This is an up to you question. It's, it's just how, as how, it's up to you personally, how re reproducible do you think titrations are? Now that all of you have done acid base two, do you think that you guys could get the, pretty close to the same numbers if you guys did it again? Yes or no? Basically put a sentence or two there. What if any differences were observed between the determination of the equivalence point using graphical and derivative methods? Was there a difference? I reported a difference, right? Different pHs at different volumes. The volumes are very close, but the pHs were right off from each other, right? Put that. Now, because derivative method is a calculus-based thing, it's more mathematically approached, I would probably suggest going with the derivative method instead of the, instead of the graphical method. Cool. That's what you do for number, that's what you do for number two. Number three, instead of using a pH probe, uh, the technician uses a phenol, a phenol, a phenolthine indicator. So this basically, if you've done this before in the lab, it's the little pink solution that changes color to, uh, an indication of a change in pH. So it might be blue and turn pink or turn purple when it hits the correct pH. And that does, if you read the question, it turns pink at an 8.2 solution. So their equivalence point through this indicator was 8.2. 
using one of the titration curves, we only have one, <clears throat> attain in lab, determine the concentration value that would be, be, uh, would be obtained by this person, right? So I basically want you guys to do the negative uh, log or base 10 to get a concentration of 8.2. And once you have that, so you can, using M1, V1 equals M2, V2 for your acid concentration of your hydrochloric acid and the base, you can find the volume at, the, at which the equivalence point is found by using, by using the derivative, by, I would use our derivative or your derivative volume for the base and see what that gets over there. Okay, what is the difference between the values obtained for the concentration when using the endpoints and the equivalence point, express percent error? This one, I'm not gonna grade too much about. Just tell me which one is more accurate, uh, type, uh, graphical or derivative, basically. And that is what I want you guys to do. I'm gonna stop sharing real quick. Uh, let me go look at my notes real quick. For okay, that is all my notes for this lab. Hopefully this was helpful to you guys. If it was, um, let me know. I'll continue doing these things for you guys, for the labs you guys do at home. Uh, now it's time to look at you guys blankly as I talk to you guys directly. Next week is considered a work week, if you guys get this far in the video. It is a work week, meaning that no groups will come to class. I will make an announcement about this as well, but no groups come to class next week. I will hold office hours during the normal scheduled lab times. If you have questions about lab, or lecture, come see me. Otherwise, I will see group A in two weeks. Group three next, and uh, in, yeah, see group two, see group A in two weeks, group B in three weeks. This is the last level guys will do in person. The last two labs are on your own. That does not mean I'm going to abandon you guys. I will still hold office hours and still continue to do study sessions with you guys over anything you need help with. Okay, I will see you guys when I see you. Have a good day.